upon a time in a gloomy castle on a lonely hill where there were 13 clocks that wouldn't go there lived a cold oppressive king and his niece the princess Sarah Linda she was warm in every wind and weather and he was always cold so he wore velvet gloves bright with rubies and diamonds one eye wore velvet patch the other monocle he had lost one eye when he was twelve for peering into nests for birds to fall his nights were filled with evil dreams and his days were given to evil schemes he would live and cackle Tutors of Sarah Linda to perform. He did not wish to give her hand in marriage, since it was the only war hand in the castle. Even the hands of his thirteen clocks had all frozen on a snowy night seven years before. So it was always ten minutes to five in the castle. Travelers and mariners would look up at the lonely hill and say, Time was frozen then, it's always there. For now has warmth and urgency. Mao might bring a shining night, a gay and shining courage. While then is dead and buried. The new believed he had slain time with his sword and wiped its bloody blade upon its beard and left it lying there. It springs uncoiled and sprawling. It's pendulum disintegrating. The youth lived because his legs were different lengths. He would ask a suitor, what is the difference between my legs? And if the youth replied, why one is shorter than the other, the duke would run him through with his sword and feed him to his knees. The suitor was supposed to say longer. Others were slain for trampling the duke's camellias, failing to praise his wives, staring too long at his gloves, or gazing too long at his knees. Some were slain for using names that start with X, or dropping spoons or wearing rings, or speaking disrespectfully of sin. The rest were given incredible labors to perform, to win his they were told to cut a slice of the moon or change the ocean into wine. They were set on finding things that never were or building things that could not be, could not be. All came and tried and failed and disappeared. The castle and the duke grew a little colder, and Sarah Linda grew a little older. She was nearly twenty-one the day a prince, disguised as a minstrel, arrived. He called him 
himself exceeding blue, which was dangerous since the lady can with thanks. He was a thing of shreds and patches, singing for pennies. But exceeding blue was the son of a powerful king. He yearned to find in a far off land the maiden of his dream.
something better than your song. You are somewhat less than much, and even a little more than anything. I manage in my fashion. Hark, hark, the dogs do bark, the cravens are going to bed. Some will rise to greet the sun, but whisper will be dead. Who are you? I am the Karlux, the only Karlux in the world, and not a mere divine. I must always be on hand when people are in peril. My peril is my own. Half of it is yours, and half is Sarah's. I hadn't thought of that. I place my faith in you and where you lead. I follow. Not so fast. Half the places I have been to never were. I make things up. Half the things I say there are cannot be found. When I was young, I told a tale of every door. And man from leaves around dog in the woods. But why? I thought the tale of treasure might be true. You said you made it up. I know, but I didn't remember that I had. I forget things too. I make mistakes, but I am on the side of good by accident. Or happenstance. Oh, Marchman! Oh, The Duke has heard your song. The fat is in the fire. The tie is cast. The jig is up. Your goose is cooked. And the cat is out of the bag. And my hour has struck. Ah, Charmony! The Duke prepares to feed you to his geese. We must invent a tale to stay his hand. What matter a tale? A tale to make the Duke believe that slaying you would light a light in someone else's heart. He hates the light in people's heart. He hates it. So you must say a certain prince and princess cannot wed until the evening of the second day after the duke has fed you to his geese. I wish you would not keep mentioning geese.
Take him. Fall in. Dress up that line. March. Prince, is this you speak of? And what manner of maiden does he love to use a word that makes no sense? A noble prince, a noble lady, when they are wed, a million people will I do not like your tricks and guile.
Take care, you're on my foot. Why are you here? I forgot about the turns. The doom will set you. Who knows? Swim, they swim. I should swim. Turn liquid into stone. Or mind boneless creatures made of bone. How came you here? I never know. My father was a witch, and rather mediocre in her way. My father was a wizard who often cast his spells upon himself when he was in his cups. The task you came to tell me. I did. Oh, yes. Listen. Well, the human but the poor, the poor were traveling thrice around the moon. I turned November into June. Implore him not to send you out to fight a thousand jewels. Sends you out to find a thousand jewels. But I am poor. Come, come, you are Zylam, Zylam. I heard it from a traveler I met. Your father's cast in copper shine with rubies and sapphires. In spells and labors, a time is always set. Take me nine and ninety days. First three and thirty days to go to Zorma. And it always takes my father three and thirty days to make decisions. And then three and thirty days to come back here. But you might give me only thirty days or thirty-two to find a thousand. Risk and try it. I wish it could be sure. I wish I could be true. My father may have lost his jewels or given them away. I have other plans than this. Right now we need to rest. <laughs> I 
is the Duke afraid of laughter? The Duke is not afraid of anything, not even the total, the total, the total. What is the total? The total looks like a blob of glum. It makes a sound like rabbits screaming and smells like old unknown rooms. It's waiting for the Duke to fail in some endeavor, such as setting you a task that you can do. And if he sets me one and I succeed, the total will gluck you. It's an agent of the devil sent to punish evildoers for having done less evil than they should. I have said too much. Come on, the Duke is waiting. Not days, 
to find a thousand jewels and bring them here. And when you return, the clocks must all be striking five. The thirteen clocks here in the castle. The thirteen clocks are dead. Precisely. And even more charmingly, there are no Jews to be found within the space of nine and ninety hours, except those in my vaults. And in a pretty task, I thought you'd like it. Who was that? That is listen. There's no one there. Listen is invisible. Listen can be heard, but never seen. I'm a serious sword. And if I should succeed, I wish to. I hired a witch to cast a tiny spell upon her. When she is in my presence, all she can say. I wish him well, you like him. A clever spell. I wish him well. I wish him well. I wish him well. I wish him And if I fail, I'll slit you from your double to your satch and feed you to the door. The door. I've heard of it. You haven't heard the half of it. The other half is worse. It's made of lip. Of lip. It feels as if it has been dead at least a dozen days. But it moves about like monkeys and like shadows. But oh no, can't be killed. It gleeps. <laughs> what is gleeping? <laughs> <laughs> Time is wasting, Prince. Already you have only eight and ninety hours. I wish you every strangest kind of luck. One last word of warning. I would not trust the colics over far. He cannot tell what can be from what can't. He seldom knows what should be from what is. Five. <laughs> <laughs>
oyster is a blop of glop. But a is a This wondrous woman lived over mountain, over stream, by way of storm and thunder. In a heart so high or deep, I can never remember which the naked eye can see. We must be on our way. It will take us ninety hours or more or less to go and come. It's this way. No, it's that way. Make up my mind. How can I? You have a rose. Hold it in your hand. It's this way. I will tell you the tale of Adam. When Adam was eleven and picking cherries in the woods one day, he came upon the great King Gawain of Yarrow with his foot stuck in a wolf trap. For me, maiden, said the king, I cannot get my fortunes from this thing. I have no time for tears, the maiden said. She set about to free his fettered foot. Lo, the maid has freed my foot, the king exalted. And for her kindness, he gave her the power to weep jewels instead of tears. People came for miles around both night and day in all the winter weather to make her sad and sorry and to make her weep jewels. We came with heavy hearts and left with pearls and rubies. Children played with sapphires. Sorry, I hope 
widow's rest for a little while. A little then. But we must go up that hill soon. Shall I sing you a song? A song? What song? It is my wandering minstrel ballad. Every time I try to sing it, I keep getting interrupted. Besides, until I met the Princess Sarah Linda, I could not have finished it. But I have been working on it in my head as we walked, and now it is done. May I? Sure. <laughs>
would disturb a dragon's sleep and even make the total silence. I will tell you of the death of kings and little babies choked by rings. The kings all died and the babies all choked. <laughs> Tell you of the children locked up forever in the Duke's Tower in Carlton Castle. The children were all locked up forever. <laughs> I weep no more. Look and listen. The Princess Sarah Linda will never wed this youth unless he lays a thousand jewels upon the duel's table. I would weep for Sarah Linda if I were Uh, he, oh, he was a terrible coward. Will 
Casserless yells have a cobble, and bats have a dean, and a shot of a sling. And he never did things that were wobble, wobble, cobble, wobble, wobble. He never did things that were wobble.
was the night. The moon is down. I have not heard the clocks. You'll never hear them. I slew a time in this castle many a cold and snowy year ago. Sure, time froze here, but that was just because someone left the windows open. But he bled hours and minutes on the floor. I saw it with my eyes. from the sea or mica from the meadows <laughs> how much time is left i should say they have some 40 minutes left they'll never make it i hope they drowned or broke their legs or lost their way where were they going? Where were they going? I met a jack a dandy some seven hours ago. He passed them on the way to Hogger's house. Do you remember Hogger? No more. Haga has no tears. She did not even weep when she was told about the children locked up in my tower. I hated that. I like it. No child can sleep in my camellias. He followed them, the Gullux and the Prince. I do not like him. I like a spy that I can see. Listen! Listen. I'm cold. You're always cold. I'm cold and now. And never tell me what I always am. I miss Whisper. You fed him to the geese. They seem to enjoy him. Silence. What was that? What did it sound like? Like princess stealing up the stairs. Like Sarah Linda Lee. What does listen feel like? Have you felt him? Listen. He's five feet high, he has a beard, and something on his head I can't describe. The goddess, you failed the goddess, I hired the goddess for a spy, and did not know it. What insolence is this? A ball. I know that. <laughs> but why? What does its ghastly presence signify? It looks to me very like a ball. The Gullocks and those children used to play with. Beryl, 
side. The cooks are on his side. He has a lot of friends. Science! I'll throw them up for grabs betwixt the total and the beast. I'll knock them in the dungeon with a beast that has no heads. I'll slay them both. The scarlet and the shooter, the cross eyed clown, the prince. You hear me? Yes. But there are rules and rights and rituals older than the sounds of bells and snow on mountains. Go on. You must let them have their time and turn to make the castle clock strike five. The castle clocks were murdered. I killed a time here myself with snowy morning. You can still see the old brown stains where seconds bled to death here on my sleeve. <laughs> what else? You know as well as I, the prince had less have his time in turn to lay a thousand jewels there on the table. And if he does, you know, he wins the hand of Princess Sarah Linda. Oh. 
was on my sword for playing games with me and up there of them. Call out the guards. The guards are guarding the other clocks. You and I are guarding these. You want it that way. Call out the guards. Guards report to the great hall on the double. Ten minutes. Start the clocks. I cannot start the clocks. He faces thirteen men, and that is hard. We face thirteen clocks, and that is harder. Is warmer than the snow is cold. Touch the first clock with your hand. We are doomed. You make my heart stand still. You magic. I have no magic for a task like this. Try the other clock. Touch them. That's logic as I know and you think. Hold your hand this far away. Now this far. Closer. Now a little farther back. A little farther. There, I think you've got it. Start the
in joy. I see the distant shining No! 